Uh, speaking of which, it is tonight, of course, the Storm take at the Broncos' Amy Park. The call's on SEN League as well. Both teams looking for their third win of the season. The winner of this is going to be handily placed. The Storm have won 14 of their past 15 games, and the Storm are looking to extend their record streak at Amy Park to 12 straight wins. The Broncos have not won at Amy Park since 2016. Kevy Walters, who spent a bit of time at the Melbourne Storm behind Craig Bellamy, here's what he had to say about coming up against the Melbourne Storm. Oh, they're very well coached, obviously. You know, Craig's a good coach. Everyone knows the Storm. They're a tough, gritty side, so uh, you know, different tomorrow night for us, I'd, I would imagine. Yeah, it's going to be a big one. I, I, I have tipped Melbourne, uh, Miss I, but not at all confident. I, I still rate this Broncos side. Adam Reynolds showed his value coming back last week. How do you stand on this one? This is a tough one, Joel, because if there's any place... I mean, Brisbane are depleted in the forwards, right? Without Payne Haas, without um, Pia Cora. Um, they're also missing Reese Walsh, but I think Tristan Saylor is a, a, an awesome replacement for him. But if there's a side that doesn't rely too heavily on their forwards and is equally as stacked in the backs, it's Melbourne. So it's actually a pretty good matchup. Yep. You know, they say styles make fights. This is stylistically two pretty similar teams, I think, on paper. So exciting game. I'm gonna I'm gonna go with Melbourne because of the record. Fourteen of the past fifteen yep. between these two sides. Crazy. That's gotta be as big a bunny side as anyone in the NRL. Um, so I'm going to go with Melbourne for that stat. You, you, you don't bet against the numbers, do no, you? No, it's an exciting game. Uh, by the way, Ryan Pappenhausen, uh, every time he started versus the Broncos, he has scored. He once scored four. I think that might have been magic round. They welcome back Munster, Hughes and Welsh. Are we expecting as much rain in Melbourne as we're having here in, in Sydney? Because that would be... A, no, we're not. Yeah, the so that's going to be me. good. Uh, Broncos set to give Man Mountain... Uh, ben Takura. If his nickname's not Big Ben, it's got to be Big Ben, doesn't it? Um, his NRL debut, looking forward to that. He stands at 205 centimetres, which is six foot eight, which I believe is about five centimetres taller than the North Sydney Bears front row, Nelson Asofa Solomona. That's how big this bloke North is. North Sydney Bears. What's <laughs> doing there? Oh, mate, I, I, you know what? We can't question Bellamy. Clearly, everyone would love him in the team. But there's a bigger picture for Bellamy, and he's clearly said, you're not where we need to be right now. Yeah. So go back there and your penance, and I reckon come the end of the year when he's firing, we'll say, ah, that's why he did it. think he will be firing end of the year? I think so. Okay. I think so. so. Theoretically, if he went to market right now, would that be buyer beware? Um, well, probably a bad an- analogy, but I, I was certain, and it's only early days, so I could still be right, but at this stage I'm very wrong. I thought the Bloor Olam trade was going to be a heavy win to the Melbourne Storm. Me too. So so at this stage, I'm prepared to say I'm very wrong on it. Mm. Olam has become, and I said this to Fletch, we haven't seen a quicker uh, to a new audience cult hero since the Beatles went on the Ed Sullivan show. <laughs> Mate, <laughs> within his first sec- second carry at Leichhardt, the crowd nuts. was yeah, just yeah, loving yeah, him, yeah. and he's responding accordingly. Um, I think we'll get the best out of him, but here's Kevin Walters on the debutant, Big Ben Takura. Yeah, well, just a young guy coming through the ranks, a bit taller than most people, so he, that brings a bit of attention towards him. But he's a, he's a footballer, certainly, um, and it's great that he gets you know his opportunity, you know, to make his debut in the NRL. We've got a lot of faith and confidence. This has been he's been two years now or three years in our system, so and I feel he's maturing enough now to ready to handle the the NRL and what it provides. It's very exciting for him. Well, I'm excited to see him play. Yeah, no, we're just looking to to get him an opportunity when we can. So the opportunity you know, did come up. I've been sort of looking for the last couple of weeks now with him. He's been, um, you know, very good around the place here, particularly at training. I notice him, how hard he is to handle. So um, we expect that's a transition, you know, into the NRL. Storm, you know, Storm, uh, no different to, to the other teams, you know. So, um, but it's, it's good. It's great for Ben. Um, we just want him to be himself and just do what he's been doing here at training every week. Uh, you know, running hard making his tackles and being a good teammate. Obviously, uh, he's, he's been doing a lot of things right um, in the Queensland Cup. So um, the next transition is to play in the NRL and transfer what he's doing there. It's very simple into what, what he needs to do in the NRL. And that's why we've got a lot of confidence in, in bringing him into the side. I love listening to Kevy. Just a straight shooter, no nonsense about him. And uh, that's where he lands. Just a, a good fella, any Kevy Walters. How old is this kid? I'm trying to find somewhere that his age... He said he's been in their system for quite a while. Um, but, yeah, it does, it, why, why is that the case that you come with so much extra expectations? Because of your height. 
I think so. I think so. But this kid clearly would have stood out for all the rep teams yeah. coming through. I'll tell you what I'm excited about, and I'm glad the weather's going to be good, is today is the birthday, and I'll, I'll explain where I'm going to here. Today, and I sent my daughter, who loves rugby league, loves playing fullback, and I sent her, I said, darling, watch this. It's on the NRL. It's a highlights package of Nathan Blacklock. Yeah. And he was he was my favourite player to watch. Um, was Na- Nathan Blacklock turns 47 today. So happy birthday to Tinga. But if you go and watch his highlights, to me, he's one of the best anticipators in the game. So whenever you watch Nathan Blacklock and his highlights, mm. if something was about to happen, mm. you'll note that he's moving before everyone else. Yes, yeah. he was quick, yeah. but he would take off just that little half second before everyone else. Terry Lamb, of course, identically could do the same thing. Like two of the best... He probably had to go a couple of seconds early because he didn't quite have the pace of that's Nathan right. Blacklock. <laughs> but that's right. But, but that, that's yeah, testament. Yeah. He got 150 yeah. tries or something on that bar. Yeah. The three best in the game, and I'll, I'll do this in order, the three best in the game and anticipating and this instinct, number three, and this is why I tipped him at 300 to one on get him on side for top try scorer, Tyrell Sloan. He's got that same instinct where he, you just watch him okay. and he just takes off that... A little bit before everyone else. Yeah, right. I'll, I'll keep an eye out for that now. Number two, he's only got one try. But if you go and watch all his games, I reckon there's about six or seven that he was so close to scoring. Number two support play, instincts, Ezra Mann. Mm. You watch how yeah, often he call. takes off before everyone else. Yeah. And the next guy, who I reckon he might even end up being the best of all of them of all time. Better than Blacklock, better than Barr as far as... Instinct support. It's a big call. Ryan Pappenhausen. Wow. You know, Ryan Pappenhausen, he has scored 47 tries from 54 games as a starting fullback. That's numbers comparing. This is a fullback, not a winger. Mm. That's numbers comparing with Blacklock, Radradra. It's elite numbers. Yeah, it's absolutely. A- Where is Ryan Pappenhausen? And two of them are playing in that game tonight. Where is Ryan Pappenhausen in the state of origin talk? Because I, since his injury, I haven't heard his name mentioned. Now everyone's saying it's Edwards or is it Tedesco? Pappenhausen goes about his work pretty quietly, but pre-injury we were talking about him potentially coming in at fullback. Yep. Would you still have him up there in that conversation? I would. Mm. I, I'd have him in every single team. I, he's Nathan Blacklock was my favourite player. Today, Ryan Pappenhausen is my favourite player for that same thing. To win an Oscar... You've got to be in the picture all the time. Mate, he's in, he's in the picture all the time. Yeah, you watch, like you watch how often all those three players are in the picture. Yeah. You, you see the other week where Ezra Mam got smashed off Luttrell? Yep. That pass back inside. Go back and watch how they make the break. He's a left-sided player. The break's on the far right, and you just see these little legs trotting up, knowing something's about to happen, and he's the one to get it. They are amazing support players. What is that? It's just a, it an awareness sense? of the game. Yeah. yeah. It's just an instinct. And those three players for me have, you know who is also very good at it, but it's unfortunate he's injured. Mate, Luke Metcalf's got a very good instinct about him as well. He sees something about to happen and takes off before the field too. one three hundred oh one eleven seventy. Um Knights versus the Dragons at McDonald Jones Stadium. The Knights head home after a loss to the Warriors with only a five-day turnaround. The Dragons buoyed by an upset. Five-day turnaround. Who had that? South and the Roosters, I think. That That's right. The the Roosters had a five-day turnaround against South, didn't they? Versus South having you know, like an eight-day yeah, turnaround. Yeah, that's why people were saying, you know, it could be a close game. Yeah. Because the Roosters had a short backup. Didn't you know, affect them. Didn't, no. Didn't affect them. Um, the Dragons buoyed by an upset over the Seagulls in the gong. They have won 18 of 23 at McDonald Jones Stadium, so they really like that. The news, of course, that uh, Frizzell is out of the clash. He's going for scans on a hamstring concern. They do welcome back Jackson Hastings, Dane Gagai, and Leo Thompson's a cheeky in. This game for me is a flip of the coin. Oh, yeah. Kai Pierce paul here's what he had to say on his former teammate uh, there at Wigan, and they're back together, Jackson Hastings. Yeah, no, he's, Jacko, uh, he's handled it pretty well, actually. Um, he sort of just uh, took a step back and obviously let whatever happens, happens, and um, he's fitted back in like a glove. You know, he's, he's, it's not hard to get uh, along with Jacko for me because I've played with him before. Um, so I know the sort of the sort of guy he is and how he is as a player as well. So he's he's slotted in pretty well and yeah, good training today. Uh, there you go, um, Kai Pierce Paul, and, and I wonder what that's going to do for him too, having somebody on the left hand side with him who knows his game. Mm. What does that do for Kai Pierce Paul? Uh, to me, 
I, I, I felt this was the obvious starting halves. I, I don't know why it's taken three combinations, and I could be wrong, but I, I feel like this is their premier halves pairing. Is their best halves pairing? I think so. Cogger and Hastings, for sure. What do you think? I like the young Price. Will Price. Okay. Yeah. With who? Probably Hastings. Hastings? Yeah. I mean, look, I, I went through two years of Cogger at the Bulldogs. And I, I never really saw anything yep. spectacular. You know, solid player, a lot of effort, but nothing out of the ordinary. And, and then he, I feel like we're judging his his whole career off basically one half, probably 20 minutes of football. And it, it is, and we, I love him. Jackie Cog, I, I love him. And I, I, he is my starting half. But that system at Penrith is just... I watched Brad Schneider last week look like the best halfback in the competition. Yeah. You know what I mean? Sean O'Sullivan, when he was there, looked like one of the best halfbacks in the competition. Uh, young Kurt Falls, I remember he filled in one game. And I'm yeah. going, Bulldogs, sign this guy. Hasn't been seen off Nobby since. Okay. Uh, I think he's up at the Broncos. Is that near Nobby's? No. I don't. No. <laughs> uh, anyway, um, Bulldogs take on the Roosters at Core Stadium. Both teams coming off a round four loss. Yeah, the Roosters have won nine of their past ten against the Bulldogs, which is a stat that... You know, they've had a few lean years. One nine of their loss, uh, they've lost nine of the last ten against most clubs, yes. I would suspect. Jacob Preston and Addo Carr, big outs. Big outs. Yep. Excited to see young, I believe it's Katonga, yep. not Katoga, pronunciation. Yep. Excited to see him. He was pretty trialed pretty well. Um, had big wraps on him. He's come across from the Tigers. Um, this is the 20-year anniversary of course it is. Of the Bulldogs Roosters grand final. Yeah. So there's a there's a big uh I believe I was I was speaking to uh Aaron Warburton yep. last weekend. And he was saying that they're doing some sort of event where all the players from both teams are coming and they're swapping jerseys and then they're having a night out together or something like That's that. That's classy, isn't it? Classy. But I've also heard stories about both those sides and they've got some of the great characters in them. Oh, both yeah. those sides. And a lot of those Bulldogs players actually ended up, so you get Marco Mealy, Braith and Nasta, Willie Mason, Nate Miles, they all end up going over and playing for the Roosters. Um, so they're mates with a lot of those guys anyway. But um, that's going to be a huge night, I would imagine. Who was the halfback? For the Bulldogs, yeah. Brent Sherwin. Shifty Sherwin. Wasn't he a good player? Shifty Sherwin, yeah. Um, he I signed don't... one of the first big deals, you know. He's like He signed like a five-year, $500,000 contract. And you know who they let go to keep him? No. Jonathan Thurston. Oh, that's right. <laughs> Yeah. Fumble. <laughs> Don't mention the JT. <laughs> um, and uh, apparently like, a lot of Roosters fans will tell you that El Masri still just getting Double the ball movement. down now. Yeah. It took a long time to get it down, didn't it? But yeah, what a grand Minnie final. That. What a grand final. Bobcat Ryan, that's a good story where I think yeah. that's the first game he ever captained. Yeah, it was. Ever yeah. in his life, like yeah, in any yeah. age group. Um, one three hundred oh one eleven seventy. We've got the, well, Lindsay Collins comes back. Terrell May, who's been enormous, goes back to the bench. So there's a luxury for the Roosters. Myself and the coal miner are diametrically opposed. I'm super confident on the Roosters. As you should be. Yeah. Well, why is the coal miner so confident? Yeah. I mean, he's, he's, he's punting with his heart. Yes, yes. You've got to separate the two. I think so. Rabbitohs and the Warriors, Accor Stadium. Rabbitohs have won eight straight against the Warriors. I'm opposed the other way. I just think the back five... Yeah, How talk do they to get me here. Talk to me here. We were, we were yeah. talking in the break. This is a game you're very confident. I yeah. want to, and I get scared when I'm so confident. But I just think to myself, Canterbury had so much field position against South. Yeah, something like forty tackles in their twenty meter line. Correct. Yeah. So, so not only do they have a huge edge in the kicking game with Sean Johnson, you imagine that this vigorous defence of the Warriors have just defended a set off South. South kick off down the field. It's fielded by Chance Nickel Clookstar. Great carrier for the ball. Yep. Dallin Wattenis Lesnick goes for a run. Roger goes for a run. Uh, Marcello Montoya goes for a run. Rocco mm -hmm. Berry goes for a run. Or maybe Adam Fanua Blake puts his hand up and says, I'll have a charge. Torhu Harris. How are they going to get any field position mm. against the Warriors side? Yeah. I can see the Warriors pack assisted by those odds outside backs getting them a lot better field position than, than Seas will get. Is, is Chance at full back a better balance for the side and a better attacking weapon. Is he a better ball player than Roger? I go back to the the one of the best bowling attacks of all time, the West Indies. One of the reasons they were so good is because every bowler, different shape, size, the ball's coming at different angles. And I know I bang on about this hybrid model, but this team in particular, 
the fullback rolls so hard and for 80 minutes for 27 rounds of the year plus finals, this to me screams of what, why does he have to say that Chance is fullback? Why can't Roger go there for half an hour in the game? Yep. Yep. Chance can play centres. Yeah, he was the centre coming through, wasn't he? So that, yeah. that is something different you can throw at teams. I like it. And so, so this is your this is your bet of the week, essentially. Warriors. Warriors. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Seagulls take on the Panthers. Four Pines. It is a sellout. Panthers have won three straight since being shut out by the Storm 8 blot in round one. The Panthers have won eight straight in this clash against. So they broke the record having won nine straight against the Roosters. They can do the same here if they beat the Manly side. Daly Cherry Evans... Sets the club record playing for his 310th. Now, I want to ask the listeners this. Daly Cherry Evans, in the history of the game, who is his closest comparison? Is he Alfie Langer? Is he Ricky Stewart? Is he Brett Kamali? Is he Where is he? Or where, where is Daly Cherry Evans? On ability or playing style? Well, it can't all be about premierships because it also depends about who you play with, right? Mm. So it's just got to be about the player themselves. Where does Daly Cherry Evans stand in the history of the game. Look, he's past Cliffy Lyons, who is an absolute icon of the game. Here's what DCE had to say about another Clive Churchill medalist, Cliffy Lyons. Got so much respect for what he did in his career. Um, Cliff Lyons' resume is individually one of the best. Um, I know it's one of the best at this club, and uh, there's a reason why he's in the Rugby League Hall of Fame. He's a legend of the game, so I certainly haven't done what he's done in the game. So I guess there's a part of me that does feel a bit of imposter syndrome passing someone like Cliffy Lyons because of what he's done in the game and having not done as much as him. So I think it's a dangerous game when you start comparing yourself to legends of the game. You can sometimes forget how far you've come as a person. So um, I think that's really important. But I've got a lot of admiration for Cliffy, what he's done at the club and also the support that he's shown me throughout it. Um, he's the sort of bloke that's even at times, you know, egged me on and just said, like, go on, mate, go and pass it, you know, like, get after it, you know. He sees that sort of, you know, the records are there to be broken, basically. So he's, he's been really supportive of me throughout my career. Well, I would say Daly is a great of the game. I mean, I've lived through his career and Clive Churchill won grand finals, captain the Maroons to State of Origin series. Um, I would say, I would say he's, he's a great of the game. So this one here, uh, 169 says he's comparison is Brandy. Well, I didn't see Brandy's career, so I don't know. Is that a fair comparison? Uh, Brandy had a wonderful career as well. Maybe, maybe that is. Maybe that is a bang-on comparison. Both legendary players. Uh, in the case of Daly Cherry Evans, 18 finals, NRL finals. A Clive Churchill medalist, of course. Um, 22 state of origins. 21 appearances for Australia. Just a terrific player. Terrific and player. minimum, minimum two years to go. He looks as good as ever. Yep. He doesn't skip to beat. His preparation, his recovery, his professionalism must be up there with the best ever. Because he, he hasn't got slower. His kicking game's still amazing. He's not getting injured. He's, he's the Benjamin Button. Yep. Yep. That's exactly right. Uh, Daily Cherry Evans talks about things could have been very different for him. He may not have been passing Cliffy Lawrence because he could have been a Titans player. Here's what he had to say on the backflip. That whole contract saga was a part of the hardships of me. I look back on it, you know, quite fondly now because of what it did to me. It really steeled me. Um, it gave me a better understanding of how the media works as well. Um, so all those things helped me to be where I am today. Um, so, yeah, um, it could have all been very different, but it's not. And I guess I don't really look back and think what could have been because um, so much great stuff has happened since then. James Fisher-Harris returns for the Panthers. So there you go. Great story, Daily Cherry Evans. We wish him well. Brad Schneider, as you mentioned, Fills in again for Nathan Cleary due to that hamstring God concern. God knows how you pick that game. Oh, I was going to ask hard. you. I mean, is it going to be how, – how wet's it going to be at Brookvale on Saturday? Probably pretty wet, right? If last week didn't happen, if, if we pretended that never happened, I'd be so all in on Manly. Manly, yeah. But now I'm so confused. No, I'd prob I'm probably Panthers, I think. I'm so confused. Uh, one three hundred oh one eleven seventy. So there's some of the games we've previewed. Uh, plenty more still to come here on the run home with Joel and Fletch.